Porco Rosso is my favorite Miyazaki movie. It hits all those classic checklists, and then some. Yet the flavor is different, no longer for children, a passion project that started as a short for a Japanese airline. It's funny they let him make a movie with so many different uh, dogfights, but there you go. As is the case, this goofy little project transformed into a full feature. Yikes, this is bad. I can't think of another single short that Ghibli attempted to make that didn't expand all the way. It just seems like how it goes. Although, the original pitch also changed. What started as a soothing serial for the tofu brains of Japanese businessmen became shrouded in real-life civil war. Porco's Adriatic setting could no longer be as idyllic as the manga. The collapse of his independent socialist state didn't only gut-punch Miyazaki's faltering Marxist spirit, but his generation. We felt like the world was getting better, bit by bit. So when the Yugoslavian ethnic war happened, we were dumbfounded. Were we just going backwards? On top of that, Japanese involvement in the Gulf War showed its days of peaceful non-intervention may be coming to an end. A somberness spreads over the animation, contrasting with the original's swashbuckling romanticism. If the manga revels in plain mechanics, the joy of flight, of saving damsels in distress, the movie doesn't make it that far. Porco's plane is busted, barely able to get off the ground, as he rescues preschoolers from third-rate sky pirates. Glamorous this isn't. What? Hey, get out of here! Wait, don't touch that, you're... The 2003 dub is one of their finest, with an eclectic cast of veterans and big names alike. Definitely a step up from JLA's offerings, which were unique to say the least. Ladies, you gotta get out of here. It's dangerous and you might be kidnapped. Disney's standout is none other than Michael Keaton. As the titular pig, capturing that essence of cool with a jaded edge. The localization stands tall with its sharp and witty dialogue. It carries an old school soul from a different age. Shoutouts to Carrie Elways for making his third appearance on my channel. Curtis the Daredevil Yankee is delightfully camp with a maximum southern drawl that Carrie can't hang on to. And I love him because of it. Get your hands off! Shut up and listen to the song. Yes, sir. One area I find the original superior is in the French number within Gina's Bar. Yeah, it's a strange choice. The Japanese voice actor Tokiko Kato fits the role perfectly as a famous smoky singer. Not to dismiss Susan Egan, who is great in the role, but there are some things you just can't beat. Although I can't speak for Ivor's uh, French. <laughs> Speaking of songs, the Temps de Charis was written by romantic radical poet Jean-Baptiste Clement. On first glance, it could be read as about another time where days were brighter, although upon further inspection, it's a revolutionary song that gained popularity with the Paris Commune. What will life be like after the revolution changes it for the better? Solidarity, solidarity. Yet warning of how good memories can be weaponized. We see where the film's preference lies, against regimes seen in Italy. The ones that left Porco, a man without a country, only a bar. Marco, I want to thank you for keeping an eye on me and my restaurant all these years. Porco and Gina hold a special bond, represented throughout by the track Bygone Days. Dourness washes over from deaths of decades gone. It's like the pitch mentioned, we see the tip of their icebergs. Their history is implied. I can't bear to go to another pilot's funeral. Come home, will you? Sorry, baby. Gotta fly. You jerk! An aged, dusty piano echoes in the night. The essence of a feeling, the brass section comes in to elevate the mood to extravagance. Those memories, the good and bad, tie together, winding down and fading out. One of Joe Hisashi's finest pieces. His motif continues over the feature, used like As Time Goes By from Casablanca. If you're thinking of warning him, don't put yourself out. He cannot possibly escape. I stick my neck out for nobody. <laughs> That's the last thing I'd ever do, kid. I only look out for myself. Porco takes after Humphrey Bogart. Both movies take a anti-fascist angle, 
Rick makes the decision for the greater good. Even if he doesn't need to get involved, it's his duty to fight intolerance, lest it take everything he loves. Yet the key difference in Porco is the movie's anti-war position. Casablanca reaffirms the decision of the Americans that fighting in World War II is the right thing to do, as a form of ally propaganda. The most acclaimed in history, for sure. The context for Miyazaki's movie is complicated. During the Treaty of Versailles, the Italians didn't get all they were promised. Resentment grew. Over half a million dead, the country's bankrupt, another million are injured beyond repair. Fascism rises, popularized as a movement by Benito Mussolini. In 1922, 25,000 of his black shirts marched on Rome and gained political control over the country. Mussolini's fascism is defined as pro-war, extremely nationalistic, expanding. Opposing democracy of all forms, liberalism, socialism, or union. A collectivist unity, a willingness to be a cog under a wider nation, to seek purpose from under its boot. The state is your duty, using a nostalgic idea of the past as aspiration for a new empire of the future. It's everything that the Cherries seek to overthrow. Back in 1930, Porco is an outlaw for not kneeling to the regime, given a ludicrous long list of crimes for his arrest. Even when he has an out, Porco wouldn't take it. He sees the leadership as just another manipulation of naive men, just like the war. Thanks for the offer, but I'd rather be a pig than a fascist. Then you better keep your plane out of the skies. In the cinema, we see Porco watching a classic Fleischer cartoon, the kind that would inspire the first version of this film. Those elements still exist here, but the framing has changed. Porco's the evil pig, and he's going to get beaten down by the righteous, who get the girl, true love and all that. It kind of echoes a later scene in the film. Its outlook is simple, which is why Porco thinks it's trash. He knows that life isn't a fairy tale, although his old buddy Ferrari, who joined the fascists, is more in line with this outlook. This movie's really great. All right, I'll try to look out for you, but I can only do so much. Sure. Well, so long, friend. Before Porco became a pig, he was Marco Baguette, named after Miyazaki's friend and colleague who even helped on this film for the research early on. Marco's legacy is a war hero who fought bravely, saving ally and foe alike. But in the end, he was the only one left. His story mirrors that of Rodol's They Shall Not Grow Old. His comrades fly into the heavens as the ethereal orchestra glitters away, as he floats aimlessly. definitely one of the more iconic moments in the soundtrack that takes a different approach. Only the good men die. Porco abandons his humanity. Nothing left but the bitter resentment for the foolishness of man, with a heaping of survivor's guilt. All this dismay for one archduke. But why a pig? Well, as Miyazaki would say, that's because they're much easier to draw than a camel or giraffe. Porco Rosso means red pig, which would be an insult given by a fascist. Is this a reflection on Miyazaki's own political position? I've had a feeling that I will be the last red, a single pig flying alone. But as Porco says himself, all middle-aged men are pigs. It's easy to go round and round, but maybe Miyazaki just likes pigs, warts and all. After all, Porco is a chauvinistic womanizer. So this is the crew, huh? <laughs> uh, don't you have any male relatives? Women are great. Don't be such a pig. You see, they're very hard workers. Yeah, but we're not baking a cake here. Oh, Jesus, Porco, you make it hard to love you. There's one beacon of hope for Porco, and her name is Fio, the ever-energetic engineer who looks up to Porco. Her father spent many a night telling her tales of the mighty Marco Baguette, but not the pig left behind. She's a counterbalance to Porco's bitterness. Despite the bleakness of the setting and depression, the cast are full of bravado. It's a fun movie. You bet. We thought we'd get in on the action. <laughs> You're not here to help build my plane, are you? The men are courageous dummies, where the women are smart, getting by with their silver tongues. Miyazaki compared it to Rakugo. A kind of, um, it's a tightrope act to try and balance. The movie keeps all the beats from the manga while adding a coat of rust over it. We still have that dynamism for days. The 
this might not have worked if there wasn't so much respect for the whole cast of characters. They endear you. Yeah, while wine-tasting punch-ups may not be the way you expect something like this to end, it works. No one dies in the present, Porco doesn't shoot to kill, and hell, even Curtis gets to be a movie star. Fascism may cloud over the premise, yet it never envelops it. And I'm sure it's intentional considering Miyazaki's degree in political science, not to mention of Miyazaki's European otakuness is beyond compare. You're a great kid. You know what, Fio? Seeing you makes me wish I'd never given up being human. Now go to sleep. Theo proves Marco wrong. His piggish thoughts needed to change to move forward. As for the ending, it isn't, it isn't like Miyazaki to leave the story with such ambiguity. There's restraint, yet, if you look a little closer, the secret is as clear as day, like a pig in the sky. <laughs> The whole plane-centric setting recalls of Miyazaki's father, who ran a plane factory, leaving Miyazaki spellbound by their very presence from an early age. It's close to his heart. You see in all his films, and this is definitely one of the more open cases. Miyazaki used to argue with his mother about if humanity was hopeless. It's something that Miyazaki standed against, but as the years have went by, his pessimism has grown. But in Porco, it feels like the optimism of youth is pulling him back. If we've seen anything lately, it's that the end times don't come neatly, and he ain't kidding. No matter how messy things are, we have no choice but to go on living with courage and vigor. His parting words. Farewell to freedom in the Adriatic and to days of wild abandon. What is that, Shakespeare? No, it's Porco. See you later. Looking back, it's fascinating to see Hayao's reaction to Porco's release. It was an unexpected hit. No one was more surprised than I. I still think Porco is too idiosyncratic of a film for toddler to old folks' general audiences. Miyazaki's never been about passion projects. Animation is for children. Porco Rosso flies in the fact of that assumption. I didn't prepare a script for the film, so making it was actually quite tough and scary because I wasn't sure if I could deliver a satisfying conclusion, and that included all the way until the end of production. One day I watched through the film before any of the sound and voice was added. I wasn't sure if the ending was satisfying or not. Certainly, I made Porco as I wanted. I couldn't do it any other way. But I also feel kind of humiliated for changing the plan in the middle. Porco became the most successful Ghibli film thus far by 1993, seeming to confuse Miyazaki after such an unsure production. I see it different. Its change in focus is a blessing. Although I don't know where the infamous flip-flopper stands on it now. His last two projects involved his most personal movie, and another with the least interference. In 2010, Miyazaki mentioned in passing his interest in a sequel. Porco Rosso, The Last Sorte, set in the middle of the Spanish Civil War. My interest has peaked, but I don't think the pig will return. And besides, my heart couldn't take it. All I can say is what we got was one of a kind. All right, so this video was actually a technical nightmare to make. There was a ton of issues. Ghibli striked a uh, DCMA made a version of this video that was in the testing phase before it even came out, uh, and I couldn't get rid of the strike for one reason or another, so I had to sort of wait it out, but now it's here. But I did make an unlisted version for the patrons to be watching, and I need to thank those patrons now, people like Alex Moriarty, Joven, and Daniel Strait. Do, 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 do. and the rest right there and that means that in the future generally if i'm making a video about ghibli uh it's probably not gonna be like this anymore i'm gonna have to restructure the way i do it if i ever do it again and quite frankly i'm, I'm not necessarily feeling the love uh, from ghibli to do this again so thank you for watching and i hope you have a good time and a good night and a good day and a good evening